Hello. It is very nice to see you because you... when I see you, it often means we're doing some tactics. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's that's normally the way it's going at the moment. Hopefully we can also see each other when we're not doing tactics as well, because we haven't, you know, should we tell the people we've, we've not actually met? That's have we? true. Yeah. We just know each other from Zoom. Virtually. Also. Which is, like a, it's a corona a virtual thing, but... <laughs> yes. It's a corona thing. <laughs> I haven't been to Hamburg in a while. And when I did come, for whatever reason, we couldn't meet that weekend. Yeah. Uh, but I will be coming back in March, I think, for the Bundesliga, well, the Oberliga. Nice. So, so, so when I come back, I'll... Unfortunately, in March, I'm going to Berlin, so we will miss each other again. <laughs> well, I'm only going for one weekend. I'm just kidding. I will, oh, be, yes. I will be in Berlin in February, most probably. Maybe I can have oh, a okay. sneak peek at the Grand Prix, if it will happen. There, there... What? what? Are you hearing rumors that it won't happen? Well, no, no. I mean, ah. I, I'm just uh, looking at the situation of the last two years and making my decisions from that point because nobody really knows. Of course, it's supposed to happen, but for example, Matthias Deutschmann, he was uh, wanted to play in a, a tournament in Switzerland in February and yeah. it got cancelled and delayed till May. Right. Okay. So you never, ever know. Well, you never, ever know, but I think things, I mean, I, you know, it's starting in a few weeks. That said, the German infection rates are the highest they've been, I think, since the pandemic, right, yeah. per yeah. person. So if the government decides to get really, really strict, then then it might get cancelled. On the, I know, of course, the, the, the good contrast is what's happening in the UK, where I don't know if you've seen it, but Boris Johnson has basically, and the government have basically said, no, we're just back to normal now. So the yeah, contrast yeah. is unbelievable. No masks, uh, no mandates. Uh, you don't have to show your vaccination status anywhere. All of that sort of stuff is now happening as of next week in England, uh, which is, it, I mean... Let's see, let's hope shows. everything goes well. <laughs> no, it just shows how absurd politics is because so many decisions are, are made based on political reasons and not... Oh, and not on scientific reasons. Of course, and, you know. Yeah, but that has always been like this, and it will probably also go on like this for a while. Boris Johnson, on the other hand, he yeah. uh, there is a recent video. I think I saw it. I'm not sure if it was from very recent, but he was dancing. Oh yeah, yeah, on that's a, a classic. One. Yeah, that's that's a classic. It's a that's classic. A classic. Actually. Okay. Yeah, that's a classic. I don't know classic. why I saw it last week. Maybe it just boomed up again because people were talking about Boris Johnson again, like the party, the party man he is, or something like that. But well, I mean, he's 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 always been a bit of a, a dude in that sense. Absolutely, you know, so. yeah. That that I figured out too. Now we have some tactics. It's always my lovely Friday lunch, which I want to devour with you. And um, mm -hmm. it is uh, a bit of a special theme today. We are yes. talking about uh, one chess personality and some of their best tactics. So I am really looking forward. Who did you pick for today? Well, I, I mean, I, I don't know if it's their best tactics because you know, uh, research, you know, it's 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 hard to uh, to get their best ones. But I thought we would start with uh, Alexander uh, Alec, right, Alejandro uh, Alejandro, uh, however, however you want to pronounce his name. I'll go with uh, the English spelling and pronunciation of Alejandro. Obviously. Uh, you know, for many people, the greatest universal player. Mm -hmm. So when we think of universal players in chess, we think of Fischer, uh, we think of Carlsen, uh, and, and Alakine is on that list. Mm -hmm. um, and for many, he could play all kinds of positions. I always felt like Alakine was actually extremely dangerous with the initiative. I felt like he was an underrated initiative player. Um, but obviously, like all the top players as well, he could very much uh, put together very nice combinations and tactics. And he's got a number over the years. Um, and I thought we would 
basically have a look at oops have a look at some of some of those today so it's the day of alexander alakai excellent looking forward to that and yeah if you are an alexander alakai or al yachin fan um, this might be of great interest of you. And if you are not a fan, maybe you will become one because, yeah, uh, I mean, we cannot deny that he was uh, one of the really, really, really good chess players. Let's say if there is a top 20 list, would he appear? Well, Probably. I mean, you mean in terms of all, all time? Yeah. Top, top 20 of all time? Yeah, he makes that list. He might even make... I mean, there are some people that have him in the top five, actually. Um, he definitely doesn't make top three. Top five, he, for me, he probably doesn't make. But he de I think he makes my top ten, actually. But top 20, I think you're crazy to think that uh, he doesn't make this list. Gotcha. So, yeah. So, should I share my screen then and we... Yes, please. Yes, exactly. We're sharing the screen now. She wants to go on my lap, but uh, it's showtime. So she no. can, she can, yeah, she can just she stay can just sit there, be stroked. Ali while Ali you saw Alekhine is quite quite famous for his cat, right? Actually, wasn't I'm not sure. Alekhine's cat or something is is wasn't there, or was what was the story with the chess cat where somebody took a cat to to a chess tournament and the the other player was like no this is witchcraft i cannot play against this player oh i don't it's, know actually uh, i forgot it and i'm not sure if it was it tal Alekine. or alakine doesn't feel like tal to be honest if you know it, please write it in the comments because yeah. i would really yeah catch up on that on the next episode maybe or something so okay now alakine is white Alekhine is white. This is the game Alekhine against Max Erver from uh, 1937. What a um, and it's quite a long line that you have to calculate. The first uh, section of this is pretty uh, straightforward, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Um, and then uh, some kind of calculation uh is required basically um okay. but it's it's not the i don't think it's the hardest uh exercise that you've you've done with me so let's, let's see how you start exactly off. yeah the games as always are below so um feel free to always pause the video as always if you want to check for yourself uh turn the board in the correct direction just to so it is adjusted for your personal Please do, yeah. flavor. Okay. Now, first of all, of course, um, I see the rook to be one, which is trying to win the bishop on d4, but I don't think it might work. And that is what has to be calculated. So You then, don't think rook to be one works? Let's see. So the, the other rook, the black rook, can take on b3. What will happen uh, then? So rook b1. Make sure go and get that coffee because <laughs> that that <laughs> Okay, okay, I see a check on f2 as well. I mean that's kind of like an I mean rook to Firstly, I mean let's just get something straight. Rook to b1, rook takes b3 is insane because I have queen takes b3, right? Oh. Number 1, right? Oh, God. Not to mention queen takes f2 check straight away. I mean, <laughs> right. So let's just let's just calm down. I'll take another sip. And take another think. sip. Yeah, and think. And remember, the reason why we're doing this show, Anna, <laughs> is not only just because it's fun and we get to have a good bit of banter, <laughs> but also because um, uh, we're trying to reinforce the fundamentals of how to tackle positions and combinations, right? Okay. So you immediately betray the thing that we've been working on for weeks, which is what? Like, Give literally... Checks. And this is the other thing I saw um, quite immediate. And, of course, the combination I also saw. But I wanted to be sure first... Yeah, I didn't see uh, the F2 version. And, uh, yeah, you, you pretty much said it straightforward that it's not working. Now, this looks much better. Um, okay. So 97 check. 97 so check. that's 
Uh, and then the king, let's say, goes to f8, attacking the knight. And then we go to c6 and have a fork. Now. Right. So that's where we start, at least. Now, how to continue with this fork? What could okay, happen? Okay, exactly. There is... Well, how to dodge that? So, also, please always try to... If you, if you have the level to keep it in your head, because it's just a good training. I don't like it, of course, because it's uh, uncomfortable... It's a bit hard work, but it's part of how you just get better at chess all the time, Correct. all the time, all the time. Yeah. So, so the knight is on head. c6. Yes. Exactly. Okay. So the knight is on c6. And somehow um, this has to be dodged, but there must right. be something clever. And I also see always like f2 might be a little escape option at one point. But at the moment, right. two pieces are attacked. The rook cannot go to d8. The rook cannot go to b4. What about a check on f2? I will take back with the rook. Did this change anything? Hmm. Well, we are... Our queen is under attack, so that's mm -hmm. also not very helpful. But you have to keep on going. So the queen could take on... Try and visualize that position. Yeah. The queen could take on b3. Then the queen takes back, then the rook takes back, and white has a piece a more. Piece not up. good. Not, not good. good. If the rook takes, we have the same position. I, we also have a piece less. Okay, visualize, visualize. Here's, here's, here's another clue, right? Just to, so we look for checks, and in every single tactics and combinations exercise, we think to ourselves, L, I found P, it. D, O. Wait a second, I know you found it. Oh, okay. L, P, D, O. Loose pieces drop off. So I always think of L, A, P, D. Because you've seen a lot of the I, series. I just well. wanted to say that's a very good uh, <laughs> correlation. Yeah. So you always look for LPDO. Now, what piece is loose there the in that position? Knight. Correct. So you always try and find something. So the queen gives a check on C1 and can Correct. capture the knight. Let's have a look at that line. So knight E7 check, king F8, knight C6. Bishop takes f2 check. And now if rook takes f2, over will have no doubt played queen c1 check. Now it's not completely over because here white's got the very interesting move queen f1 as mm -hmm. a block. Of course, a move like king h2 is just going to run into queen takes c6 and black is uh, completely fine. But queen f1 at least allows that after queen takes c6, f7. white can take on f7. But after king g8, because white's king is open and because there is no immediate mate um, and there are perpetual check ideas against his white king, I believe this position is not completely clear and I think black has still got decent chances to hold. Yeah. But, so we say, okay, well, on bishop takes up two check. What now happens if the king just goes to h1? Because there's some more hidden dangers here, aren't there? For example, let's say the rook now comes to... Well, hold on. Let me just say, what happens on the move rook takes b3? Hmm. This might run into checks on its own, but maybe not. Hmm. Oh, I can just take uh, the bishop on f2, right? Correct. Yeah. You can just take on f2. And now if white black tries to get... Uh, clever with uh, queen c1 check like before. Now you can play queen f1, right? And the difference after queen takes c6, rook takes f7 is the king, the rook has left the, the file, right? So, I, well, even this... The king can sneak out on h6, right? Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is not mate, right? Check, check. And I see, I see no mate, but I also see that rook b1 check is just one check here, and it wouldn't surprise me 
if there's some nasty way for white to win this position. Uh huh. Like something like check king g8 and now some rook c7. Rook c7, for example, exactly. Rook c7 is actually pretty strong, I think. Queen e6, it's still not over. Queen Maybe e6. rook e7. Like, it wouldn't surprise me mm. if white has some, you know, this is one check, there are no more checks. I'm threatening queen f7 check. And if you play a move like queen d5, now I have rook e8 check, king g7, and queen f8. That's mate. another mate, yeah. Right? And, and that's just going freestyle. I haven't looked at this at all. So it's obvious that here you can do this. Also, hold on, you can go rook f1. Sorry, I might just make my life a lot easier. Rook f1 is actually the easiest solution, isn't it? Because queen takes c6. Oh, yeah, takes true. So that just doesn't work for yep. black. So he can't take on b3, and he can't really leave that back line. So what happens if he plays a move like... Rook e8. Uh, Rook e8, which looks like the other sensible move. Mm -hmm. How do we now continue with white? Well, I would love to get my queen to h8, but uh, I can't well, also that's, stop that's dreaming. That's not possible. Yeah. Right, exactly. That's not possible. Well, not yet, but I thought like about rook b1 or something. Or rook takes f2 and then... But it's not working. It's not enough no. time. Now, right. what happens if I just give a check on d6? The king goes to probably g7. Probably g7, yeah. And, um, well, how to follow up? Maybe queen f4? Exactly. Now, now you've got a legit threat, haven't you? Let me just put this on. Yeah, we're attacking but, not only but, the bishop, but also f7. But it feels as though, intuitively again, it feels as though black is getting away with things. He's probably got a few moves here. One move is to overprotect with rook e2. And oh, wow. the point is, yeah, and the point is actually that here now you don't really have a follow-up with white, I don't think. I mean... Knight d8 is funny, but... Knight d8, I'm probably, probably in time just to go queen f6. Even putting myself in this pin, because... Yeah. If, if you go, let's say... Well, for a start, queen takes f8, king takes f6, I think is not enough. Let's just say you try g4 to go king but g2. Exactly. I can, can now always... just get out of the way, yeah. right? Or go back even. And I'm I'm never losing this position as black king g2 and bishop b6. And I'm, I'm fine. Oh, actually, that's winning. So you've got to be careful. Yeah, not, um, not really. I think the king can go to f3, but... Oh, yeah. Uh, rook e3 check king. Yeah, he, well, it's... It's, it's very good. It's though. starting to get dangerous, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the other point here is that if queen c4, at the very least, at the very worst, I think rookie one, and I think black should probably survive this position as well. Yeah. So, so all of this is not really working. Let's yeah, see. but the, then, but then what you do is you don't ditch the idea and you try and refine it, right? That's the third yes. rule yes. tactic. Yes, you're right. So how do we refine this? Exactly, and there is a way. Okay. Um, how to approach this the best way? Um, uh, that's also not working. Hmm. Well, think of the idea that you just employed of the, and see of if the, the queen because F3. in that line, the king, exactly. Now, clearly, the king is much better on g7 than it is on f8 because it's lined up, right? Yes. Uh -huh. So here off, okay. yeah, exactly. Now, here after queen f3, black's response is kind of forced. You can't go rookie one, I go queen six f2. You can't move the bishop, it's mate. 
So there is only one move here, which is to play rook e2. And now the question is, can you find a way to exploit the fact that, well, you should get this, that uh, black's position for just one move is not really working. Oh. Is it? No, this cannot be. This cannot work. Hmm. I'm not so sure. Well, what? Ah, I'm having some some uh, too many plans again. Damn it! Okay. Now that doesn't help because I have to stick to one thing first, right? If I have too many ideas, Sorry. then it's like I'm. Um, uh, what is it called? If you want to catch uh, two rabbits, you won't catch any or something. I don't know how this um, is. I don't know what the saying is, but... <laughs> I mean, there's a move here that is absolutely like the move you have to look at first, for sure. Is that so? Hmm? It is. But uh, uh, the knight to d8 we had already, right? Yeah, it's not knight to d8. And I don't... Yeah, exactly. Because can't you just play f5 or something? Or no, I don't queen? think you ever want to move that pawn. That's, I think, a bad idea. If you don't... But... W okay, so then I have a plan. I had a plan, and that was okay. just b4. Because I cannot really see... Mm -hmm. I mean, black is quite stuck in this position. Like, if the bishop is moved, we give checkmate. Mm -hmm. If the rook is moved somewhere else, we take the bishop. If the mm -hmm. queen is moving somewhere else, we can take the rook or the bishop. Mm -hmm. So, black is a bit stuck, and I would just push forward my pawn, maybe? Not sure. I don't think it. Uh, that's the solution, but that's a thing which I... It's... It's 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 not a ridiculous move. I also don't see a clear because now, now you said the f pawn because I didn't consider this because I thought okay f five will just then you can move your bishop and then all is over. Maybe 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 in this position black can go f five and then queen d five. Queen yeah. F6. Well, difficult. But, yeah, it's difficult. It's, but it's... I am wrong again for some reason because there must yes. be something more clear, right? And well, because this it. is not the forcing move, right? So yeah. you can have this as the backup, but you have to, you have to first see if there's a, a forcing alternative to make your life easy. Well, then there is just the bishop... Uh, the uh, knight to e5. Now, if the queen takes, we take the bishop. But then I don't think we we win this, right? You mean knight d4? E f e5. A knight e5? Yeah. Excuse me. Knight, knight e5, I'm just going to take on e5. Yeah, and also knight d4 the same. The queen just takes. Well, oh, hold no, the on. the queen cannot take. Ah. Knight d4. So, knight d4. Why? Why didn't I see that? Okay, rook d2 is the only move I can find right now, I think. Exactly. In fact, knight d4 forces rook d2, right? Queen takes yep. d4 yep. allows queen takes e2. So you have to go rook d2. And now you carry on. And what's the difference here? There's the, the, I mentioned before the king on f8 is potentially an issue it is now what happens after a check on e6 the king has three moves left exactly check on e6 the king can go to oh, okay so oh, okay 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 the king cannot go to g8 that's mate correct uh, yeah so knight e6 check 
King G8, Queen A8 is a lovely, unusual checkmate. Yes. Okay, so the so king has to... E8, E7. Exactly. Now, so. let's take a look at E8. What does follow up here? There is another check with the queen. King can go to D or E7. Hmm. Well, it looks as as it looks good. Let's say it like that. It looks promising, but, right? Yes. I think king to e7 is by far the most logical square for that king, right? Because on e8, it can get checked. Yeah, and um, attack the knight immediately, which happens after king e7. Exactly. So king e7. Then I will move my knight maybe to g5 to give a check again. Exactly. Knight g5, right? Threatening queen takes f7. And we can start to see that black's pieces are overloaded. Also, because a move like queen of six obviously doesn't work because you can nice take force. and then knight e4, right? So suddenly knight g5. And if you had chosen this variation, this is close to winning for white, this position, because it's very difficult to defend. In fact, black probably has to play f5. f5 again, yeah. yeah, and now you've got a lot of moves here with white. Um, one move actually is... Uh, you could, you could actually just take a pawn if you really want to. I mean, it's not really in the spirit of the position. But black has got no threats. You're protecting b3. You can bring the knight back. You've got ideas of queen b7 check. The bishop moves. You've got rookie one check. So black is going to be overexposed in this position a lot of the time. Um, so that's a perfectly good move. Mm -hmm. Aljochen played the move knight f4, though, which is a very, very interesting move. Also kind of highlighting the fact that black is a bit stuck in this position. Um, oh. Knight d5 check or knight d3 is a threat. Um, so, for example, if f5 here, knight d3 simply is going to win because you're threatening the queen and the bishop. If you play a move like uh, queen takes b3, I don't think that works. Because you can just go knight takes f2. And you remain a piece up. So Which should do the trick, yeah. Yeah, over played queen d4. But the knight once again used itself as a disruptor of enemy uh, coordination with knight e2. He tried the very nice rook d1. Obviously now we got to be a little bit careful to take that queen. Uh, just to illustrate if knight takes d4, rook takes f1. Uh, King H2, you now have uh, the move Bishop G1. Nice check resource. As a resource. And um, Rook takes F3, Knight takes F3, and now something like Bishop C5. Mm -hmm. And Black should be making a draw. So, got to be a little bit careful not to fall for those traps. But Alakine obviously took it, plays Queen B7 check. And now Knight takes D4, and now the point is the King is, the Queen is now pinned and after Bishop G1. Okay. There is no mating net. Uh, if you have two, you just run up the board and you're fine. Wow. That's a very curious tactical exercise, and it's all to do with this knight. The route that this knight takes in this position is quite phenomenal, if you think about it. It's, it's actually... And although I was struggling... Impressive. I was struggling a lot with this. I I learned a lot too again. So I hope for you at home this applies as well. I took my time, which is important because I'm normally too quick. And um I think it's important to also learn that you can and should sometimes if you have time, which is we have time now, we have our yeah. tactics. You can take your time and um yeah, figure figure stuff out. Do we have one more? Yeah, we have we have one more. We yeah, can do another one. Let's sure. just do another one. We yeah, I'm I'm I think my my niveau is too bad to to solve them too quick. I mean, that was a <laughs> that was a particularly difficult problem. Let's be honest. But that was not easy. Was easy. But well, I mean, look, it was <laughs> what what I mean by that. It was easy insofar as 
how can I say, it? if you actually stripped that solution down, what did you do? You played, the first move was a check. The second uh, part Attack. of that Attack. was, a, yeah, the, 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 the first move was a check. The second one was uh, analyzing the, the, the loose piece. The third one was a simple double attack, like a forcing move. In fact, it only followed the standard blueprint yeah. Of, yeah. of how to solve a tactics problem. It just, that the example was slightly rare insofar as um, you were just moving the knight a lot. That was the only major difference, I would say. Um, Very nice, though. Okay, so here we have Adyakin, 1943, six years later. So you can see the moves, can you? No, I just oh. see the the uh, game on the very top. You cannot see this at home. Okay. But um, no, I cannot see any moves. Otherwise, that Good. that would be really weird. <laughs> yeah, that would be weird. That would be weird. Okay, this one is an interesting one. This is uh, the game Ali uh, Alakan against Podgorny from Prague, nineteen forty-three, um, and it's wide to move, and we have a pretty typical looking. The isolated queen's pawn position, which probably came from something like a Karakhan or a Sicilian Alapin or something like this, and it's white to move. Now, um, okay. there is okay. one absolutely dominant or what, what, one clear theme here. Well, how can I put this? <laughs> when, I look, when I looked at this position for the first time, I immediately knew what I was trying to solve okay. okay so that would be really interesting if you knew that too mm -hmm. well this is a game of pins and half pins yeah and no pins at all although it was a pin at one point maybe actually i only see one pin when i want to be completely fair <laughs> um the question is, pin. is this even a pin? Because... What are you in, looking at? I'm a, curious. So I'm looking at a3 and uh, bishop on b4. Right. So, well, what... what, what ah, you're, you're asking if the rook is pinned. Correct. Yes. So it Correct. Is, so technically it is pinned, but in an opening, and this is just my experience, if, if in an opening... I don't know. Maybe the rook is uh, falling. There might be a reason behind that. And sometimes it can give you so much compensation that it is worth it to just sacrifice it. So I'm thinking of, I'm just calculating a bit. So first of all, I can't, cannot really find a check. So I just go with uh, taking out a piece at the moment that is the bishop on b4. And what could happen is, of course, the queen takes on a1. So far, so good. Mm -hmm. Now, now we can try to either capture that queen or give a nice attack. So the first thing in my mind is just simply pushing the pawn forward to b5, attacking the knight on c6. That has to be dealt with. And there aren't... Well, the knight can go to b4 now. Uh, this is maybe the plan I'm looking for because now I would place my queen. Am I? Uh, is this completely wrong? As wrong as it can get, or no, am so, I still? Uh, so you're basically so your first move, if I understood correctly, was taking on b4. Yes. Yes. So your instinct is saying, look, look at the forcing move. Good. Yeah. Queen takes a one. Oops. Queen takes a one. And now, and now you um, wanted to go knight b5. No, no, no. I wanted to... Sorry. Actually, I wanted to go to b5 with the pawn, not not the knight. b5? No, no. B, B. Like, uh, ah, b5. Sorry, b5. Yes. And then you, uh, you were looking at knight b4 for black. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, ah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So let's... Uh, I mean, yeah, let's say knight. Yeah, but maybe the knight can just go back and... Uh, or back to e7, I don't know. But let, let, what's, what's the, what's the follow-up? What's the concept here? Yeah, so now I want to get my queen out and try yeah. to place the bishop on c1 to some very tricky or good place and keep the black queen in its shelter there. Which is difficult because the queen can go to a5. To a5. 
-hmm. Okay, so let me roll uh, back again because at the moment, yeah, b5, uh, b4 takes, mm -hmm. the queen takes on a1, and now the queen cannot go to b uh, to a5. Right. So, how about I follow up now with my queen two? Let's just make a move. Um, b3. Okay, not bad so far. Very, very logical sequence. I guess the only issue here is what if I now play bishop takes f3? I see. If you try and trap my queen with a bishop move, let's say you just move it out here, then I'm probably... You can going even to... give the queen, yeah. Exactly. I'm going to take on f1. Oh, but I take with the bishop. You take with the bishop. And now if I move a move like bishop d5, let's just say there was an exchange here. We've actually got material parity, equality here, haven't we? I've got two rooks for a queen. Yeah. Very unclear this, position. Yeah. Very unclear fine. position. Certainly not winning. And in fact, black might even be better, right? Because if I get castled, I've got a better structure. So that so queen b3, bishop takes f3 is an issue. Okay. That is correct. Now, I think I I don't even need to get my queen on b3 because there is still no... Oh, there is. Okay, okay, okay. Ha! Huh. So, uh, the same applies to... Very interesting. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. So, I have to, it has to be a bit more forceful, I think. Uh-huh. But how can we do that? Right. How can we do that? Is the question. It is, right? <laughs> hmm. What happens if we play d5? Okay. Very, very, very thematic pawn move, not only in isolated queen's pawn positions, but in positions with the king still in the center. Feels right to want to do that. What I will say is it doesn't feel quite right here because, for example, um, uh, if I take with the knight, let's say you take, take, and if you play queen takes d5, again, I'm probably getting away with it after castles. I've, I've got a four... It's not where I, I saw some nice things. Some here. bishop h6, I'm just going to take on b2. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, my, yeah. my advice to you, therefore, is what's the other key to solving tactics? Try it in a different order. There we go. Okay. So in this position here, then. Okay. Uh, what would happen if we play d5? <laughs> exactly. This, for me, was the move that I first wanted to play, just so you know. Oh, okay. This was the move that screamed out to me. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, it felt right. It does. To and, yes. Yeah, to open up the position while the king is still on e8. Okay, so this is actually the move I wanted to start with, even though taking on b4 and analyzing that first is completely fine. When you start to realize that's a bit murky, and then you start to realize that the concept of playing d5 probably helps you in a lot of lines, you try and make that work as well. Okay, so let's let's do that. Let's analyze this, all right? So if the black knight, uh, let's start with knight takes d5 because I think we then get um, uh, an easy kind of sequence. Well, the most obvious move is to take. He clearly can't take with the queen because he loses the piece, so he plays yes. the move yeah. takes d5. So we get to this position here, and now white's next move really comes very naturally here, in my opinion. Okay. I mean, actually, 
it may even be the case that we can do something something else which I haven't properly thought about but when I'm here in this position White's next move really comes to me very naturally as a potentially very good move interesting okay oh cannot see it I would love to give a check and um, we can't give a check that's that's the case that's out the question or I, I would at least make another threat Probably right. taking on B4 is still too early because now we're missing a knight. Exactly. So we've got another move here. It's not taking on B4. Yeah. So I am thinking of, okay, it's just an intuition and I might be yeah. wrong, but yeah. it is uh, knight to D4. Not knight to D4. Okay. I think knight to D4 is a, is, 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 uh, is a logical move. Um, I guess... I mean, it's not a it's not a ridiculous move. This at all, it's not a ridiculous move because on bishop takes e two check we take with the queen. That's the point. Yep. And if I go bishop e seven now, you've I got ideas of take... knight f five. Oh, okay. I thought we take the knight and then. No, you can do this as well. Takes yeah. something like takes takes rookie one queen c seven. Okay, it's not. Best yeah, it's not that amazing. Well, I mean. It might be. Yeah. It might still be winning. Queen d7. I mean, black needs a lot of moves to get out of this. Yeah. For example, rook c1 threatening, rook takes c6. Oh, yeah, rook... that's nice. And if rook c8, you've got ideas of, let's say, rook c3 followed by rook e3. Okay, it is uh, actually pretty nice, yes. Yeah, it's, it, looks, it looks crushing, actually. So I really don't mind knight d4. The question is, and if I... Can't really take on d4 here. Bishop takes g4 is very awkward. So I like it. I'm going to uh, cheat and just see what the comp says. Yes, please. And it says white is better here. Okay. Okay. Cool. It so that's that's good. Um, I'll show you also just for time purposes as well. Yes. I'll show you the, the other move that I was thinking of here, which is the move queen to b3. Okay, that I just really didn't even consider anymore. Wow. Yeah, well, the reason is because now if black castles, now the concept comes to fruition. Because after a takes b4 and queen takes a1, I'm, I'm covering b2, I'm covering a4, and now I can just go bishop d2, um, and obviously I'm picking up the queen. And the I have a piece more. And I have a piece more compared to the other variations, True. precisely. So after queen b3, castling is probably not possible, but if the bishop does retreat, now the whole point is this. I've got another idea, which is to play queen takes b7, hitting the rook and the knight. The rook comes to c8, and now we can just build up very naturally. For example, we can start with... Well, we even could, the Exactly. Now, uh, knight to d4, maybe, exactly. or... Yeah. Knight to d4, because if this, nice. you've got this vision shock. And if you take on d4, bishop takes g4 is almost certainly very good for white with a Tempo against the rook. Looks Although very no, black and castle. Mm. No, he can't. The rook is hanging. Oh, yeah, from bishop. the bishop, of course. Right, the rook is hanging. <laughs> um, but maybe after knight d4, uh, let's say takes, takes black. Well, no, here, actually. After knight d4 and rook c7 runs into knight takes c6, which is very important. Oh. And the is hanging. And if bishop takes a2, and yeah, and if uh, rook takes b7, knight takes a5, we win a piece, bishop takes yes. a2, knight takes seven. All of this stuff. Now, again, what well, your suggestion of knight d4 is very logical, but the whole, what I want to say here is that yes, please. this is the key to it all. Yeah. This, this moment here, you, that you have to have that um, pattern recognition that this d5 move, which is so commonplace in all of these structures, mm -hmm. especially works when there are black pieces hanging, when there are loose pieces, and when the king is in the center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. feels right to do this. Now, what happens if black takes with the pawn straight up, which, by the way, is the game? Well, we now get something very similar, but the difference here is that now if white takes here and queen takes a1, Okay, white has got a very, very special move here, and I will ask you to see if you can get it. It's a very clever move that Alakine saw to win this. 
Um, okay. And I'm curious, I'm curious if you'll get it. Oh, boy. Feels as if it's... Um... Well, it's, if you say a very clever move, it's probably one move which we haven't played before, right? Correct. Hmm. Okay. Jeez. Is it? No, that's not working either. No, okay, for time's sake, please solve it. Okay, I'll show you it. It's the move knight d2. Genius. <laughs> I, the idea is oh that you want God. to play knight to b3, which traps the queen. We already know that the queen is trapped, so any attack of it in the current position will win it. Wow. And the point is that now if bishop takes e2, the check. whole point queen check. takes e2 is with check. And the point is now that black is bust over. For example, if king f8, you can attack the queen. The queen does have a6, but now we have b5. Queen here and knight a4, winning a whole piece. White, oh, black, oh uh, gosh. You, you can try knight d4, but the, the tactics keep working. Queen, queen here and queen uh, knight takes here, and you save both pieces and you're winning. And if you play knight e7, trying to block the check, you can just go rook e1, castles knight b3, and now the conversion is quite easy because after queen a6, you can just take and the rook, uh, the knight is hanging on e7, and this is a fairly simple uh, conversion, I would say, for white. The, the rook performs really bad against the two pieces here. I mean, you can play on with the move like rook e8. I guess here you do have to exchange the rooks off the board. But the the, the resulting end it takes, takes, and now let's say king f1 or bishop f3, probably king f1. The double pawns are an issue. Yes, black can start sniping over here for double pawns, but you can always win pawns back. But ultimately, in these endings, it's always the case that the two pieces work much better than the rook. I would actually be looking to exchange one pair of minor pieces here mm. to make our life easier. The king runs in. It's a process, but it is... I would say that this position probably is... If you put this on the machine... Uh, probably here, actually, the move is bishop e3, by the way. Because knight g4 runs into knight takes d5. And bishop e3 develops a piece, and it's just much more logical. And if you put the, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'm going to cheat and see what the machine says, and it gives it as plus 2.5. So there you have it, right? I mean, 2.5 is just end of game if white plays correctly. Wow. Very nice. Absolutely. Yeah. Very, very nice. yeah. So this this took far longer than we expected. Yeah, it was absolutely it worth it. Let's keep the tactics uh, section off for today. Okay. And do it uh, a bit more on the next episode, I would Sounds say. Sounds good. You can unshare? Yes. Yes. yes my gosh. Ah, it's, it's great. It's uh, good stuff. You, um, it's always very, very, very surprising for me how deep and how many facets tactics have. It's yeah. not like, okay, there's those certain tactics. Find them. We all know those one movers with find a fork or uh, find the pin or whatever. But uh, understanding the position and giving a positional tactical win or that's something I'm still learning a lot from. So yeah, thanks everybody for watching. We see each other next week. Yeah, Until then. Bye-bye.